Well, welcome everybody. You are joining for the Wild West Zone Series 2, Race 6 in a 7 race series. So things are tight. Tonight we are at Phillip Island in Australia. And uh, what an amazing track. This is really cool. This is my first opportunity to drive this track. And it is a flowing, fast track that is... Uh, well, <laughs> a little bit out of control at times, which is kind of fun, but it is uh, definitely uh, not without some perils. We did a great uh, prelude on Wednesday night, uh, and uh, people found all sorts of fun uh, on the track, uh, both uh, in uh, finding speed that they were looking for and, uh, and sometimes finding off tracks that they weren't. It was a good event, though. But coming into this, it's actually more interesting. This is the penultimate race in the series. As I said, there uh, are seven races in the series. Next week, we go to Brands Hatch to conclude in a one-hour race. So it'll be a little bit of a departure as well from our standard format. Instead of a 40-minute race, it'll be a full-hour race, which will dictate a whole host of other strategy concerns as we do that. But um, I think that this race is actually going to be really interesting and may ultimately uh, put some space between folks that are relatively tightly clustered um, from from past races. If we actually take a quick look at the, the uh, scoring. Um, in, in the Pro Series, we're actually pretty well um, spaced out um, from uh, second to third, but first and second, Derwin and Rich have a nice little battle going that is uh, basically a half point at present, which, you know, that's uh, that's pretty crazy. They've been tight. They've kind of each won. They've gotten some bonus points, have done some good things. Um, and uh, it looks like uh, this race will probably be a big, a big part of deciding. Um, of course, you know, final is final as well, because there's only one point that separates uh, the the places. Um, if if you have a first, second place, uh, it, it's still going to remain fairly close and pretty tight, but uh, should be a good a good finish. Club is uh, spread out a little bit, so Jonathan Waltman has put on a stellar clinic um, all season long in um, driving really clean fast races. Um, he's gotten a uh, pole position for club several times. He has uh, driven several zero incident races, um, has done a really good job. So he's out head and shoulders above uh, Brian Granger and uh, Chris uh, Siborowski. And of course, if you remember, Chris was in the sport class last series and um, continues to just drive extremely well. He, he's one of those guys that's just sort of a natural. Um, he hasn't... Uh, spent a lot of time doing official iRacing races, so he is still technically licensed as a rookie. This guy just has a knack. He's got a feel for tracks um, and a feel for speed, and I expect that he will be further promoted um, as we move through um, uh, into the National Series later on this summer. Um, sport is where it's kind of interesting. We've got a five-way cluster of folks. Um, Matt, of course, uh, is back in sport um, after we kind of reassessed his move to club and moved back uh, for points reasons, fairness reasons. Um, he is standing at the top here, uh, two and a half points ahead of a tie for second place between Jeff Rosenthal and Arnie Clayson. So these guys are are definitely um, uh, vying for for top position and still have a chance uh, with the next two races to to climb up um, and surpass Matt, although Matt's got the edge for sure. Um, below, just behind them, three points back from uh, the, the second, third fight uh, is Jeff Williams and myself with 203 points. I kind of think that I'm probably out of contention for much better than third place if everything fell my way. But I'm not willing to give up the fight just yet. But I, but I do think that that's probably the best that I can do at this point. Uh, even if uh, everybody has really bad races, I think that that's that's really hoping for an awful lot to go my way. Um, and Jeff may be thinking the same thing. Um, we are basically uh, in a little fight of our own to kind of see who comes out of top for that fourth position, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Tonight will play a significant role in it, though. I think that uh, if one person has a really bad race. All I have to do is keep their nose clean in the final and uh, we'll come ahead. So I think that uh, we're, we're going to see people kind of laying it out to try to do the best they can tonight and maybe kind of lay back a little bit on, on, on the next week's race. But I could be wrong. Um, it's all really too close to call. Challenge is also pretty awesome here. Frazier has come out and um, just joined us uh, for the first time this series and has come out and just... Uh, done a really, really stellar job in most of the early races. He had a rough race five. 
um, and uh, that that cost him a little bit um, in, in terms of momentum. But he's still a good five points ahead of Volker, who's also uh, a newcomer coming in and has driven really nice. He's got a really cool little livery going on his car um, now. That's a a throwback livery to uh, a, a fun uh, a fun race car that a lot of people may remember from recent eras. Michael doing a great job driving uh, nice steady races, nice steady uh, steady points haul um, in third place in challenge. Um, I think that second and third still a toss up. I think Frazier people will be hard pressed to catch Frazier and surpass him. So I think he's got that challenge championship pretty wrapped up. Who knows? Um, I haven't done the math, so I don't know for certain who's mathematically eliminated from going up a step or or back. Um, I just know that we uh, we we do have races left. So um, that uh, tonight will definitely play a significant role. If somebody has a really, really bad race, um, could be could be bad night. Um, but I, I don't think anybody's going to have two bad races in a row. So I think Frazier's gotten his bad one out of the way. I think Jeff Williams got his bad one out of the way last race in sport. Um, so I think that, that, that we're, we're going to have a nice nice finish here to the end, and it should be pretty exciting. Um, this is, of course, uh, all gearing up to the zone challenge races that will be coming up. So pretty exciting uh, as well. Um, the uh, top four finishers in each class in each zone, not the zone group in total, but each zone itself, um, advance to compete in the zone championship. Um, most of our uh, groups have... Um, not enough people actually to advance, so everybody that's competing will advance to that. I think that the one exception may be in Zone 8 in the club class. I think we have several folks. I think we have a total of uh, six total co competitors in Zone 8 um, in the club class. And so um, we're going to see two people that we're, we'll go have to race in the challenge races to get into the uh, Zone Championship. Um, but still, um, it's... it's uh, still feasible for them to get in. But I think every other zone that is competing in the Wild West zones um, has um, four or fewer competitors in the class. I'm trying to see if anything's true. Yeah, I think that's true for every, you know, like one, two, three, four, even zone six and challenge. So should be good. Should be sending a lot of folks up to the uh, the races for the zone championship, but still, um, it doesn't mean that this means any less to us. We want to have bragging rights and uh, finish really strong. So sit back, uh, relax, enjoy the race. I hope uh, to do reasonably well. Um, again, my strategy doesn't really change too much. I want to keep my nose clean, go for that zero incident race if I can get it, um, and uh, do the best I can. I'm never the fastest guy on the track, and I kind of own that. That's fine. Um, I would rather have a clean race and uh, compete soundly um, than try to go for speed and wreck myself or somebody else out. So that's going to remain my my call to myself, my inner voice, so to speak. But uh, <laughs> sometimes I don't always listen to my inner voice. I get carried away and wind up costing myself uh, problems, which has happened um, in at least one race, um, if not a couple of races this, this series. So uh, uh, wish me luck and uh, let's see how we do. Most of you know the drill by now. Uh, please be careful getting back onto the track if you spin off. Lots of places here, uh, lots of runoff area, so hopefully you can avoid the walls, but uh, just be careful, watch your relative, ease your way back onto the track. Uh, coming out of the pits here, uh, you're coming right onto the straight, so, so just take it easy. People coming down the straight, uh, it's probably a good habit to stay a little bit uh, right until you get past the pit exit, so that if somebody does come out there, they're hard to see because of the, uh, the wall. Uh, but if you see him on the relative or your pit, uh, it's his name there, Jim tells you that uh, if somebody's exiting the pits, just stay a little bit right, give him some room. He'll zoom right by him. They're not going to slow you. And for guys coming out of the pits, don't stop or don't slow down. Just stay to the left as you come out there and you'll be fine. Uh, this is an official race for the Wild West Zones. Uh, I don't know if we have any guests tonight. If we do, uh, we're welcome. This open to all members of the PCA Sim Racing. Uh, just uh, remember that uh, people are racing for points here for the championship and qualifying for the zones runoffs. Tonight's race is 40 minutes. You're going to need to stop for fuel, and there's no quick repair, so look after your car. Uh, qualifying is our usual three laps, 10-minute uh, loan qualifying. 
keep the chatter off the radio and uh, a reminder that uh, we don't call out other drivers uh, if they have issues on the track take them offline after the race also a reminder next week we're at Brands Hatch and the, it's our season wrap up that race is going to be an hour long race so an hour long race and the uh, we still have a two-hour time slot, so the practice will be shortened uh, a little bit. I think it'll be a 50-minute practice, 10-minute uh, qualifying, and then an hour-long race. Okay, let's qualify, shall we? I think that this should be good. Or at least interesting, if not good. Track's clear. Push, push, push. Okay, Jip, we've got three laps. Let's get this done. So the trick here is to make sure that I don't come out blazing with cold tires because this track sucks on cold tires. I want to make it around in this warm-up lap. Track temperature's decreasing. It's now 72 Fahrenheit. Actually, in my warm-up, I had an off and cut across the track and wound up getting a disqualification penalty. <laughs> uh, luckily, uh, we were able to clear it, but uh, that was a little unsettling. I lost out on about 10-15 uh, minutes of practice because uh, I'd been kicked out, essentially, of the server. goes to show me avoiding somebody in turn one. And then cutting across the grass and not getting my brakes locked up enough before I crossed all the way over. Can't figure out that turn. I've been trying all week to make that fast, and I just suck at it.
track will really show you the absolute best and worst this car has to offer. <laughs> B-17. I've tried third gear, fourth gear, double apexes. Try everything in that corner to make it fast and just cannot figure it out. The only time I've made this fast is when I've come through with my hair on fire, way over cooking it and getting all sorts of sideways, and that seems to be fast. But boy is it uncomfortable and darn near impossible to reproduce. So when I do have a fast lap around here, it's uh, one of those things that I can never repeat. Which is frustrating. You're now 2.2 seconds off the pace. So my second lap was my best lap at 133.575, so that's what we're going to take into the race. The air temp is 64 Fahrenheit, P19. Car number 44 in the right lane. So I got Jammer in front of me and Mr. Williams behind me, Rosenthal ahead of me. So we shall see. Arnie and Matt are way the heck up there. Matt out qualified Arnie, but not by a lot. Arnie put down a lap, I think it was a 132.7. That's what I recall. The prelude, there was an amazing amount of attrition in the first couple of turns. <laughs> People spinning off and stuff. So, uh, try to avoid being part of that. Being here mid pack, we definitely have the opportunity to get caught up in mess. Just need to be smart. Okay, Chip, get ready. Green, green, green.
God, these tires are cold. Come on, Chip. Don't overcook. Tires aren't working for you, man. This is a tough damn track. P15. Matthew Scott, I don't care. Take me, dude. Dude. You're gonna pass me, pass me, man. Come on, Chip. Don't let him get away. <laughs> Lingering around like I owe you money, man. That ain't cool. I said that on camera. I'm sorry. At least I didn't say it before it happened. I said it as it happened. Chip, ignore that fucker in the mirror. Stick to your line. Nail those exits. Did you hear what he called you, Scott? That was not me. I did not say that.
sorry I'm talking very much. This is a hairy ass track. Wedge up. Nice walk up. Fifteenth place. Captain Rogers behind is now 1.6.
don't always get the exit I want, but I get the exit I need, and that's what's mattering right now. Thank you, Andrew. The gap to Scott ahead is increasing. It's now 7.1 seconds. That lap was a 134.7. Yellow flag, watch out. The actor Williams behind is now 5.7. Thanks, Andrew. It's way too easy to fixate on the car in front of you and stop paying attention to your marks. And if he's not driving the same lane you are, that does you no good at all. Okay, Chip, the next car is Scott. The 
13th place. Another slow lap. Sector 3 is 0.6 off the pace. Exactly. Sorry, John, take him here. Thanks, Mark. Okay. B12. Can you guys hear, please? Another thing I know to be true is that the cold soak in the pits on a stop produces a really fun car to drive <laughs> coming out of Come on, let's put this hard work to good use. That's 20 minutes to go, 20 minutes. Okay, Jip, we're halfway home. Should be about six minutes of fuel remaining. <laughs> Sector 2 is 0.9 off the pace. Just done at 134.0. Five minutes of fuel remaining, five minutes. starting to float around on me a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and hit. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Andrew. Pit lane speed limit is 45 miles per hour. Okay, Chip, we'll pull you to the end. 300 feet. 100 feet.
lost a couple of seconds there, that sucks. There's a car approaching, watch your mirrors. Stay behind the white line. P19. The leader's pitting now. Ranger is now in the lead. Ronnie, I'm gonna pit. I'm behind you. B13. Thanks, AT. Sector 3 is 0.6 off the pace. front has increased to 1.4. Don't look at your relative while they're going into a turn, shit. That's bad for business. Thanks, Andrew. The gap behind is now 1.3 seconds.
Damn it! Thank you. With okay. my zero into the brace. God damn it. Let Randy throw off my uh, rhythm with his off, and rather than just diverting my line and going around him, I fucked up. Damn it all. Sector 2 is 1.4 seconds off the pace. Take it off, Jim. Let's finish the damn race. Damn it! B15, you're all over the place. Come on, man, get your head back together. Up left. Thank you. Sector one is 0.5 off the pace. Thanks, Daisy. front is sparkle. So Williams behind is now 4.0 seconds. Sector 1 is 0.6 off the pace. I need a caffeine drip. Thanks, Walker. Welcome.
Okay, Stephen, go on the right. Thanks, Volker. Thank you. Audio. That's five minutes to go, five minutes. Chris, go well. Thanks, Scott. Okay, go right. Thank you again. Sector 2 is 0.8, off the pace. Thank you. Hi, right, welcome. You guys are fast anyway. left two minutes
shouldn't have let off the accelerator there. That was actually a pretty good entry if I had screwed it up. Yellow flag, caution. Sector 1 is 0.9 .9 off the pace. OK, Jip, the next car is Huckle. As satisfying as it would be to pass you, Rob, I probably couldn't catch you anyway, and trying would probably put me in peril, so... Unless just seeing me and your relative freaks you out. That's five minutes of fuel left. You're Sector two is 1.2 seconds off the pace. White flag, one more to go. Two minutes. Thanks, Rachel Devin. Good win, Rich. Thank you. Yeah, good race. Thanks. Nice win, Rich. Got ahead of one X though. I think I need that extra point. Is it a is it a hot contest for first place in the pro division? Yeah, I think it's pretty close up top. Fourteenth. That's the end of the race. We'll get him next time. Fine. Why would you stop? Nice racing, Chip. I just could not catch up to you. Got to admit, I was watching my relative pretty hard there for a while. What a great race. What a great track. I love this track. Um, it both uh, terrifies and uh, excites everybody, especially driving the cup car. It really brings out the best and the uh, and the worst of this particular car um, in terms of handling and uh, um, how bad habits can get in trouble. So it's a, it's a lot of fun. Uh, across the board, it was, it was a really good race. I think people had a lot of fun uh, and raced really well. I thought it was pretty incredible from that perspective. Um, I want to congratulate uh, Rich on the overall win. Um, Jonathan Waltman, again, um, did really well. Second place overall. 
um, and of course wins the the club class uh, uh, first place position as well. Um, Derwin came in third, um, so still really close race there at the top. Um, as far as the sport class uh, I'm competing in, uh, looks like uh, Matt had another good night. Um, Jammer did a tremendous job, um, start to finish. Um, did a ran a really good race. I got close to him at the end, um, but wasn't quite able to to catch him. So um, my race. Uh, uh, not not so bad. Third in class. Um, I had three incident points uh, by the end of the night. Um, unfortunate off um, where I just sort of lost my rhythm for a little bit there um, due to something that happened in front of me. Um, I got to get over that that crap. That's that's just disappointing. Um, I, all on me. Had nothing to do with the car in front of me, although, you know, he had his own issues in front of me. Um, my response to it was what caused me my problem. Um, and that's that's really the lesson we learn, right? That's uh, why we're all working at this, trying to get better, is that uh, it's it's those mental hiccups. Um, you, you can't always control what's happening around you, but you can control your reaction to it. And that was an inc instance of uh, me failing to do that, which is uh, disappointing, but also um, it's something I can learn from and continue to work on. Jeff finished behind me. He was uh, behind me, I think, uh, five or six seconds. It was kind of the, the margin there at the end. He was... Uh, wasn't quite able to reel me in there at the end, but he was close enough that uh, I was watching my relative all the way through those last several laps because uh, I knew if I made any sort of mistake, that was close enough that he would have capitalized on that, um, but luckily was able to keep him behind me. Michael pulled a big win. I don't know if he has won a race in his class, uh, won his class previously. I'm, I'm just not recalling. So if he has before, apologies, Michael, um, that I didn't uh, notice, but um, a great, uh, great pullout tonight. That's a, a tremendous, uh, tremendous run. Good race. Good run, run race. I see uh, four incident points there. Um, if you look across the board, fewer and fewer incident points from top to bottom. Um, and those that did have incident points, uh, typically they were involved in incidents where cars were jammed up and maybe went off track earlier in the race. So um, all in all, those those numbers are improved um, quite a bit um, from from early in this series and even in series one. If we go back and look at uh, some of these same drivers and how they were driving, um, fewer incident points means that people are driving more consistently and truly improving. And um, I, I think that that's uh, the perspective that uh, going back and look at pr looking at previous videos and previous uh, races really brings is that uh, um, it's not just one person. It's as a group, um, everybody is improving in measurable ways. Uh, pretty exciting. So the race, I kind of gave you a, a look at where we were in terms of the race and the points um, at the beginning of this. So after we calculate race six, we can take a quick look uh, just to kind of recapitulate the uh, the class. Um, the, for tonight's race, um, Rich, Derwin, Rick got the podium. Um, Derwin got an extra point um, for, um, uh, I believe he got the point for a perfect race, a zero incident race. You can actually scroll up here and see for sure if that is the case, and it is. So you get a zero incident race. Um, Jonathan Waltman um, won um, not only um, the uh, zero incident race, but he also got a, a point for um, getting pole for his class. No, 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 that's uh, Chris got pole for the class. I apologize. Yeah, Chris got the pole. Um, Jonathan just got a point for zero incidents. Um, Derwin got a point for zero incidents. Stephen Chen um, got the point, the extra point um, for the pole position tonight. So he did a tremendous job uh, for the pro class. Um, and uh, Chris did an outstanding job of getting that pole position for the club class. So I, I'm not sure if either one of them have gotten poles in their class uh, prior to tonight, um, but that was a, a big, a big deal. Um, to see Stephen uh, be able to do that, although he wasn't able to finish on the podium at the end of the night. Um, Chris also had a zero incident race, which is uh, tremendous to get the pole and have a zero incident. I mean, that's not slouching. His average lap time was quite impressive. Um, and his fastest lap time, 132.3, zero incident race. That's, that's flying out there uh, on this track, especially. Um, Matt got pole position for the sport class and won, so he got the extra point there. Um, Jammer, again, tremendous race for him coming in second. Um, I managed to pull out a third ahead of Jeff. 
and Arnie and uh, Jeff Rosenthal um, had uh, had some challenges tonight um, and wound up finishing a, a little bit behind. But uh, that happens to all of us. It was uh, <laughs> I think it was it was Arnie and, and Jeff's turn um, at uh, having a bad race as uh, Jeff and I have both struggled um, a, a few times, um, as has uh, has Jammer. So um, it, it's it's really evenly balanced. Um, and again. Uh, the top spot uh, for challenge, Michael, good job. Um, Scott, second. Volker um, came in third. Um, and uh, some of the, the top runners had had their share of challenges. Um, so uh, um, Frazier being key among them. If we'll actually look at the, the, the championship results and what that actually means is that um, we still have a darn near tie at the top of pro class. Um, so Derwin and Rich are going to continue to fight that out into Brands Hatch uh, to, to settle that uh, a little bit more definitively. Derwin has the half point advantage um, only because of the, the split race four where we actually had uh, point splits uh, where he got that half point uh, um, advantage. Um, if we uh, look at uh, the clubs, so... Not as tight, although second, third, fourth, um, second and third definitely are still um, something that will be decided at, at Brands Hatch. Um, there's room for other movement in here as well, a little bit further down, fourth and fifth, um, obviously very close. But um, that that's all relatively close when, you know, top finisher um, gets uh, uh, 43 points. Um, one point back for each place below, and you got 10, 10 people that are, are competing, or up to 10 people that are competing. It doesn't look like we're having a full full group uh, every every week. Um, that's, uh, there's a lot of opportunity at Brands Hatch for this group um, to improve or to fall behind, so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out, especially between Brian and Chris, both uh, great competitors, good racers. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that, uh, that fleshes out. And sport. Oh my gosh, is this close. Now, I heard something at the very, very tail end of tonight that I'm I'm both a little saddened by, but also um, it represents a tremendous opportunity for, for the guys that are close uh, in the fight here in sport, is that I believe that Matt said that he's not going to be able to join us for race seven, which essentially means that he is going to be out those 40-some-odd points um, or 30 some odd points wherever he finished um, uh, and or potentially could rate, finish in race seven because he's not going to be there. So he's going to lose those points. So that means that all of us that are able to participate are going to be able to pass him up. Um, and uh, that's uh, not insignificant. That means he's going to fall. He's going to tumble quite down the field just by virtue of the rest of us showing up. Um, I was sorry to hear that. Uh, I was uh, hoping to see if maybe you know somebody could make a run at him or uh you know we could get a little bit closer see how it all finished up to have him fall completely out simply because he isn't able to attend is really disappointing although with seven races we couldn't do a drop race um and have the the points as close as this race is really amount for much um it would have actually made the race even tighter than it already is um so we definitely need that seventh race and we can't do more races because we have to wrap up for the zone challenge championship stuff um so race seven is going to count matt's going to fall out which means that we have uh, arnie with 245 points in second rosenthal and myself with 244 and uh, jeff williams with 243 and you can't count Jammer completely out of the equation back here at 235. So this is still really, really super tight. Um, everybody's going to have to bring their A game, and it is really, really going to be close, cutting, cutting it all the way down to the wire. Um, we do have a tie break um, calculation capability. Um, it's pretty straightforward, I believe. I believe it's uh, the most wins, most top fives. Um, average best finish or average finish and um, some other things that take into account and they kind of go in order. So if one thing settles it, the top thing, number of wins settles it, then great. And if not, it goes to the next thing. I have a suspicion that we're going to have at least one, maybe two, maybe even three <laughs> tie break scenarios uh, at play to kind of finalize where people settle in the sport class, which is tremendous. That's, that's just great that we have that many people that are competing so closely together. 
Um, and we've all had good nights, we've all had bad nights, and uh, some of us have had some stuff that's been in the middle. Um, it's been pretty exciting, so that'll be fun to wrap up. Um, Frazier um, is up by three points, so he had his lead cut into quite significantly uh, with this race. Um, uh, so I, I think that uh, we're, we're going to see a, a really interesting fight as things wrap up at Brands Hatch uh, in the challenge class as well. The top three are within striking distance of one another. Um, Andrew's not out of it. He could maybe uh, make a showing, make uh, make a jump up, but I suspect that we're going to see Fraser, Michael, and Volker um, really contend for that championship, and uh, it's still anybody's game by a point standard um, at this point. So, uh, Brands Hatch is going to be an all timer. I say that every time we're wrapping up a series, but I really mean it. Uh, every um, class has a fight in its, on its hands, um, and it's going to be an interesting race to the very finish. And uh, I couldn't be prouder um, of, of everybody that's participating in Wild West Zones, simply because we started out really kind of worried because we didn't have that many people participating. Um, and we've grown and continued to grow. Um, the, the, the list of participants is, is quite, quite significant. Um, we have people that are registered that are not yet classed that we're hoping that will be, you know, making their entry in. So this is going to continue to grow. Um, but this is incredible. Um, and credit to all the participants for not only showing up and participating, but also really working on racecraft improving and uh, ensuring the quality of the competition. Um, it's all it's very important to everybody. Um, the EDEs are always packed. Um, and we have practice sessions throughout the week that almost everybody shows up to, which is just incredible um, and uh, makes it a lot of fun. So looking forward to seeing how this wraps up. Brands Hatch is my personal nemesis, so I'm not looking forward to it, if I'm honest. Um, I have had a lot of historic problems on that track. Um, I just I, I can't find rhythm there uh, for whatever reason. I I. I jokingly say it's a it's a it's a British thing. I just can't find the rhythm, can't find the right accent for that track. Um, but I uh, I need to figure it out. Um, it looks like if I'm gonna gonna contend for uh, for a good place uh, in the finish of, of the sport. Anyway, um, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed uh, enjoyed tonight's race. And uh, if you have questions, comments, please do leave them. I love comments. Love seeing comments on the videos. If you are enjoying the videos and you do have a YouTube account, um, go ahead and subscribe. Um, it helps me out a little bit just to know that people are actually getting the videos. It also, biggest benefit of subscribing or even just liking a video is that um, other people that are demographically associated with you or as similar to you, uh, if uh, YouTube algorithm gets those likes, they, they figure that other people like you might like the video as well. And it might expose it to other people that might be on the fence or might be in your region or your club um, that are watching other videos and may be interested in seeing um, what we have to offer just by virtue of, uh, of similar interests. So do like, do subscribe, do comment, um, because it does help not just me, um, of course, you know, the ego involved. I like to see people are watching the videos and are enjoying them, and I get plenty of that via Discord as well. But uh, uh, it will help grow the brand, grow the market for PCA Sim Racing in general, and the Wild West Zones specifically, um, which is really what we want to do. We want to continue to spread the word and uh, get this in as many people's hands as possible and really spread the, spread the joy um, and, and get people into this. So anything you can do to help would be appreciated. Anyway, thank you and have a good night.